Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. I want to take you through how to set up for painting. We're doing acrylic on canvas, so I want to talk about how to be successful with how you set up your workspace. First of all, find an area where you can set everything up, and the most important factor here is a lot of light. So work by a window, somewhere where you get really nice indirect lighting. In my case, I'm using this work lamp, and I've got a studio light over here, as well as some nice lights in the ceiling uh, that are track lights I can move and aim around. You want that nice lighting so you're not going to see shadows while you draw and paint, and you want to see the colors accurately. So that's going to be really important. Another consideration is acrylic paint will stain. This is permanent once it dries. So wear some clothes where it's okay to get a little bit of paint on there, or think about an apron or something like that. If you do accidentally get this somewhere you don't want it, just wash it right away. I am working on top of this piece of foam core that I had lying around that will protect my table. Your next consideration is setting up some sort of easel, some way to look at your painting in an accurate way. Here's the problem. If I am looking at this flat on a table, I'm seeing this on an oblique angle. Basically, I'm seeing things out of proportion. Also, sometimes you have issues with glare and reflection with the wet paint. What we want is to tilt up the canvas so you're seeing this from a perpendicular angle. This is really important to be successful while you work. So the best way to do that is with a tabletop easel like this, or maybe a stand-up easel. Now, you might not have those available to you, so there's some other options. I'm sure you can find cardboard pretty easily. Just put your canvas right in there and find something to lean this up against. That's going to give you that same perpendicular point of view. You could also use something like a clipboard, a piece of plywood, just about anything. This is a small canvas that's pretty easy to work with. So if you don't have a real easel, find something to make it work so you can prop this up on an angle. One other added benefit of this is the cardboard protects your workspace. Let's talk about our paint setup. Other than the canvas and easel, you're going to need a few other things. A set of acrylic paints. Hopefully you have something similar to this. You need typically at least six colors. This is a larger set, a little bit better to work with. Some of the colors we're going to be looking at. Regardless of the brand, good acrylic paints are going to have pigment names. So instead of just white, this is titanium white. Uh, some of the other colors that are going to be really important for this are going to be some type of blue. In this case, I have a blue. It's just called primary blue. You might also see cerulean blue or phthalo blue or ultramarine blue. Any of those will work, but they're going to have some differences in how you mix them. Next color that's going to be really important is a yellow. In this case, I'm using yellow called primary yellow. Again, you might see um, cadmium yellow um, or some other name like that. We're going to need some type of neutral. Uh, burnt sienna and burnt umber are two that I have here. Generally, you're going to see some type of red. Uh, greens are pretty common, especially one like this. It's called phthalo green. So this is going to be a dark bluish green. In this case, my set also has violet uh, called dioxazine purple. And then I have this color, which is ivory black. So you're going to see some type of black in the set frequently. Now, black is a color we're going to try to avoid. Remember, when we're mixing color, we're going to make the colors look lighter or darker uh, with lots of strategies, but adding black is going to turn your color gray. It's going to make it a little bit more uh, neutral. So avoid using black right away as your main tool for darkening colors. Regardless of the paint set you have, you're going to find you're going to use a lot of white paint. So you may want to consider getting some extra white next time you make a run to the store or maybe get an Amazon order on that as well. So some other things we'll need is a paper towel to wipe off our paintbrush. We'll need a selection of brushes, which I'll go through in a minute, water, and a Stay Wet palette. Now, what's important about the Stay Wet palette is we have a lid that fits tight, we have a palette paper, and this is sitting on top of this foam pad. This foam pad needs to be hydrated. And put your palette paper on top. If that pad is too wet, your paints are gonna run, but without that, your paints would dry out. Acrylic paint dries really, really fast, so it's important that you have these covered. If you don't have something like this, you could find any type of container and line it with aluminum foil, parchment paper, something like that. It may not last as long, but it'll still work. Lastly, you need your photo reference nearby. For this painting tutorial, we are painting from direct observation. We're not painting from our imagination. We need something to look at constantly. It must always be up while you work. 
So find a way to plug in your iPad so it doesn't go to sleep and keep it real close by. Obviously you have some advantages like being able to zoom and focus on details and other things. Whatever part you're painting must be up on your screen during the entirety of the painting process. Don't turn it off, keep it up. Let's talk about some different paint brushes that I have. You might have some similar brushes. It's okay if it's a little bit different, but I'll show you the ones that I tend to use the most. So the largest brush I have here is this flat angle. This is about a half an inch wide, and you can see it's thin on this orientation. This allows you to really control and get a nice edge. This will handle paint really well. It's a great way to start for just washing in large areas. So I have the same brush in a smaller size. Two other brushes that are really handy are flats and filberts. Now, a filbert is actually my favorite brush. It's a flat brush with a feathered and curved edge instead of a square edge like this one. These brushes are wonderful to use because you have a lot of control, but the softness of this brush allows you to blend more easily. These brushes are both about a quarter inch wide. Anything close to that is gonna work pretty well for a canvas of this size. Now, our goal when we paint is to do something called implied detail. So we don't need a brush much smaller than this. So we're gonna paint in a way to suggest the details instead of explicitly show every little part of that. One example of that would be some of these trees in the distant mountains of my reference. I'm not gonna be drawing and painting individual trees. They're gonna be little brush strokes of color. Another series of brushes to use are these. These are just rounds. Uh, I have a, about an eighth inch and a quarter inch round. I don't tend to use these as much, but they're great for line work and detailing. Finally, you should have a palette knife. Now this is a really nice one, it's flat metal, so it has some flex to it and a really thin edge. This is gonna allow you to cut and scoop paint in your palette, and this is the best tool for mixing color as well. Some artists use this to paint directly with the palette knife. For this lesson, we're gonna be focusing on mixing with this only and painting with the brush.